Hi, my name's Emily Smith. I'm the Environment Manager at the Angling Trust. And today I'm going to be talking to you about invasive mussels, why you should care about them and how to ID them. The species I'm talking about in particular are quagga mussel and zebra mussel. So these originate from Eastern Europe, from the Ponte Caspian region, so the Black Sea, Caspian Sea, that area. And unfortunately, they've spread and invaded into the UK. They are freshwater mussel. They can also be found in estuarine environments and they are quite small, but really have an impact on our waters. So said, why should we care about them? So they are what are called filter feeders. So they take up algae, even though um, that sounds like a good thing because the water clarity will improve. Uh, what happens is you're removing a really vital food source, energy source from those waters. So that is a food source for insects, for fish, so it disrupts the whole food chain, so actually you lose the biodiversity at that site. They also create these really dense mats, they grow on top of each other on the water surface, and so they can clog up pipes, they can grow on weirs, and so they can cause issues at outflows in different areas as well. And also where they grow on the, the banks around the water, they can actually end up cutting the line and they can cause injury if you're going in on a barefoot or um, just kind of reaching in to get things. So they have a human impact as well. So how do you ID them? So the key features to look out for these invasive mussels is firstly their shape. So both of them have a classic D shape. The second thing to look at for the quagga mussel is that if you lay it in the palm of your hand, it will not lie flat. It will turn off to a singular side whilst the zebra mussel will, has a flat bottom, so will sit flat in your palm. And if you turn them over and look upside down, you can see the zebra mussel it has a flat line along the bottom where the shell comes together. Or well, in comparison, the quagga mussel has more of an S shape that you can see here. So if you combine those ID features together, so you look at the size, that should be up to four centimetres, but can be smaller than that. If you put them in your palm and see how they sit, if it turns off on the side and has an S shape, then it'd be the quagga. Or if it lies flat with a bottom, a flat bottom and has a straight line on the bottom, then it's a zebra mussel. I'm really concerned that this species will spread to elsewhere and result in having greater impacts um, that we've already experienced in these systems. So if you come across one, report it. So there's a, a website or something you can get on your phone called iRecord. So take a photo, note your location and then upload that so the local responsible authority can know it's there and get out there and start to manage the species. And what we can all do as anglers is make sure we're always following the check clean dry measures. These are three simple steps you should undertake after every fishing trip. So the first one is check. So make sure you are looking at your uh, your, your boots, your clothing, your nets, and remove any mud, plant material, any mussel shells that you might come across, and just make sure you leave them at that water body. The second one is clean, so thoroughly clean your equipment, that anything that's been in contact with water. Um, make sure you check the rims of your nets, the treads of your boots, and ideally use hot water, 45 degrees for 15 minutes. You can do that at home or if they have wash facilities, a dip tank at the site, then use that. And the final step is dry. So leave your equipment out in sunlight for 48 hours. It'll give it that final whack and make sure that any invasive species have been killed from your kit. And it also works on fish diseases as well. So this means that you know that your kit is clean and you're then not going to accidentally move one of these species from one site to another. So remember, the key ID, uh, ID features, you can get some great ID um, guides on this if you need it. Uh, report it using iRecord and follow those three check clean dry steps. Thank you.